Hello and welcome everyone. I guess most of you don't know me, so before we start, let me introduce myself. My name is Tobias Gürgens. I'm a 22-year-old student at the Hesse Platten Institute in Potsdam, and I work on different OpenSUSE-related projects in my free time. This is my first presentation at an OpenSUSE conference, so thank you all for coming. Now, do you know what this is? A Steam Deck, right. And do you know what OS runs by per default on the Steam Deck? SteamOS. And SteamOS is Linux-based. So we are all happy with it, right? Well, the average user is. But I'm afraid I'm not the average user. And the original operating system, SteamOS, isn't perfect. For example, I have Xbox One controllers and a Wi-Fi dongle. SteamOS has drivers for them in their official software repositories. That's good. What's bad is that they are not pre-installed. To install them, you have to first disable the read-only mode of the operating system and then install the driver package. Not too bad, I would say. However, since system updates are distributed as images, as soon as the Steam Deck updates the OS, the changes I have made to the system have disappeared. With every update, I have to reinstall the drivers again. Not a huge problem, but at least an inconvenience. So I had a look at the alternatives available. And there are quite a few, actually. There is, for example, Bezite OS, based on Fedora Atomic, or Nubora Linux Steam Deck Edition, based on, again, Fedora. Also very popular is Chimera OS, based on Arch Linux. And soon, Manjaro Gaming Edition will be released, also based on Arch. But I'm not a Fedora or Arch user, I'm a Proto Open SUSE user. And this has some good reasons. For example, OpenSUSE offers with Ion an operating system that is made to just work. It would be great on my Steam Deck. I don't want to tinker with it, I want to play my games. Ion just misses the required packages to support it. Specifically, some of the advantages OpenSUSE has to offer over other distributions are Ion keeps itself up to date and uses Tumbleweed's package repositories, so updates um, are generally available within a few dates. And you could think that this would lead to system instability, looking at your arch, but this is not the case. Ion is actually very stable. Thanks to OpenSUSE's automatic testing framework, they are able to detect critical issues before they are published. And last but not least, Aeon uses ButterFS as file system, allowing it to use features like compression and, even more important, snapshots. And this is actually the main reason why Aeon is so great. Every update is written to a new snapshot and doesn't affect your current system, so it can't be broken. Additionally, OpenSUSE Aeon is immutable, you can't write a file, for example, to the slash user directory, so the user also can't break the system. To still support programs that are not included by default, OpenSUSE Aion supports Flatpak and DistroBox to install additional packages. And should you really need to install something on your OS that is not supported by default, Aion can do that and the modification also survives the update. OpenSUSE in general is a great choice if we want to create your very own distribution. OpenSUSE has an open infrastructure available through the Open Build Service, or short, OBS. This is where the packages and images for OpenSUSE are built. It's free to use for everyone to host their own projects. I can use the packages and stability that OpenSUSE offers and just add the missing parts I need. So, about one year ago, I started working on my own operating system for my Steam Deck based on OpenSUSE's technology. The first step was to create a new project on the Open Build service. I had some experience with OBS before. I ported some packages to OpenSUSE, so I thought, how difficult could it be? But oh boy, very difficult. To support the Steam Deck and my own distribution around it, I do not have to port just one or two packages. My project currently consists of over 40 packages, and every single one of them had to be configured to run on OpenSUSE. And now, once a day, a new image is created with my packages. And just like this, a new distribution was born. But how should it be called? 
I wanted it to fit to Ion and Kalpa, existing immutable open source projects. Both names are terms for long time periods, so I went with an even longer time period. Yuga. A yuga cycle is four yugas long, and according to Hinduism, that is about 4,320,000 years. I guess that's long enough. Now, that we have a name, we need to create the missing packages. The main source for them is a GitLab repository by the user named Evlav. That's the name Valve, the maker of the Steam Deck backwards. The firmware and packages for basic Steam Deck support are available here. Unfortunately, the Linux kernel doesn't support all features of the Steam Deck or other handheld devices officially yet. But there are patches to inject the necessary code. And should you use a device that is already supported by Bazet or Nobora Linux, feel free to test Yuga Linux. I included their patches as well. Additionally to the firmware and drivers, scripts are required to enable some features of SteamOS, like switching to the desktop mode, doing a factory reset. Since I wanted Yuga Linux to support as many features of SteamOS as possible, I had to develop solutions for them. The desktop mode switching actually took the longest time to figure out. I tried different things and nothing really worked. For example, when I tried to switch the session, I was thrown to the login screen instead. Not nice. Fortunately, the other projects I mentioned also had to solve this issue. And so, I took some inspiration. And who would have guessed? Their solution works in OpenSUSE as well. So don't work hard, work smart, I guess. For other problems, like factory reset, I had to invent my own solution, though. I didn't want to create an extra partition that just contains the original image next to the real OS. Instead, I opted to also use ButterFS snapshot feature. When the image of Yuga Linux is built, I run a script that creates a snapshot of the system in a hidden folder. And when a factory set is requested, this snapshot just gets restored. I admit that this is not optimal, as one would want to reset to the newest system version, but that is just one update command away. All right, all right, all right. This all sounds great. But how can I, as a regular user, install Yuga Linux? Quite easily, actually. I use the developments from the Ion community, and especially of Richard Brown, the maker of OpenSUSE Ion. He develops TIG. TIG is an installer specifically made for OpenSUSE Ion. And now, Yuga also uses TIG. This means that you just have to flash the installer to a USB stick, boot it, and let TIG do the hard work. For the future, I plan to create a website for Yuga with installation instructions and some documentation so everything gets a bit easier to the end user. Until then, the OpenSUSE Ion documentation is already quite good. Most importantly, I would love to see Yuga Linux become an official OpenSUSE project one day. I don't have experience with this pr process though, so I successfully procrastinated it so far. Okay. But can I prove that Yuga Linux actually works? Yes. Yes, I can. In fact, this whole presentation has been running on Yuga Linux. I installed it on my notebook, so let me show you some of the features. So the first thing I would show you is the switching to the game mode that should work now. Let me quickly do that. Now Steam is shutting down. Now Firefox should close, hopefully. There closed Firefox. And we have the Steam logo. And here we are in the game mode. So that worked. That's great. Um, so uh, can I play games? I installed Trickmania. I don't know if you know that. I'm a big fan of Trickmania. So I can start that. Let's check if that works. As we can see, the overlay for performance stats are working. So I can select my profile and game. And we're in the game. Um, I'll not play a map. Uh, I'm too bad, so that would be uh, very embarrassing. So I'll quickly close that again. Here we are. So 
Let's switch back to the desktop mode and see if that works as well. And here we are, back on the desktop. So one second, let me start the presentation again. Here we are. And so, do you have a handheld device that could use some OpenSUSE magic? Or just a PC hooked to a TV that you use for gaming? Maybe Yuga Linux is the perfect dress for it. Feel free to join the project's Telegram group and install Yuga Linux today. And who knows, maybe one day you will also have your very own Linux distribution. Thank you very much. Are there questions? Have you benchmarked it against uh, stock Steam OS? No, I've not benchmarked it yet. But is it, uh, feel is free it, to do that. <laughs> uh, but, okay, aside from benchmarks, do you feel any difference? Um, I don't really feel a difference. But I guess that's a great thing, because the Steam OS is really optimized for the uh, Steam Deck. So being similarly good is already quite the achievement, I think. Uh, hello. Um, can I run it on any computer with NVIDIA? Because the, the, the Steam Deck is rising graphics, so if I need NVIDIA drivers or anything else, it should work as well? Yeah, um, it's based on, a, or the kernel is a regular Linux kernel, uh -huh. so it should work on any device. Okay, okay. And another question is, uh, how well does uh, Proton works? Like, no differences as a Like on SteamOS, yeah. Okay, okay. So in theory, you could, if you have a computer plug it to, to a TV, as you mentioned, you could run it. Hmm? Interesting. Yeah, it works perfectly. You have benefits of being a Steam OS-like, and you also have uh, benefits of being open source when you Yeah, you it's want perfect. It. So, yeah, it's good. Okay. Thank you. First of all, thanks a lot for your uh, for your talk. You mentioned you want to achieve as much feature parity with SteamOS as possible. Um, what is the, the state on that? Um, what's currently not working? I believe that's probably the better question to ask, given how much we already saw working. Um, well, the issue is, as far as I know, there is nothing that is not working. Um, so I guess nothing, but who knows, maybe I missed something. Feel free to test it. Really impressive, thank you. So even HDR works, I've tested, I've verified that. So from what I've heard, there in the original CMOS, there are some non-upstream changes to things like Wayland. What about these? Um, so the compositor that um, the game mode uses is the same here as what SteamOS uses. And what isn't upstream, it hasn't, there, when there's no patch, well, I can't use that. Um, but the game mode should just be the same. All right. Thank you very much.